Interpretation. chapter 7, this is where Stephen, Stephen, uh, recently I preached this in Acts chapter 6 and Acts chapter 7, Stephen preaches this very, very powerful word, and it comes, basically he tells them the, the history of his people, the history of his nation, the history of the Hebrews that uh, from Abraham to Moses, that uh, all the way through that they rejected the different people that God had given him, and he summarizes it in verse 51, you, you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart. You do always resist the Holy Spirit. Okay, there was such truth. There were, now, uh, there, you know, let me just say that, that today we're going to cover a little bit of ground here, and there's going to be about 30 little mini messages in here. There's going to be some nuggets in here. So I'm not building to make one big point. There's going to be several several things in here that if you got in the air to hear what the Spirit is saying, there's going to be some revelation in here. And the, what we really need to understand what is happening here with Stephen, and I'm going to show you this in other ways, that Stephen brings forth such strong truth. He gets down in the trenches. Well, here's the way I like to put it. In, in real Christianity, it's, it's, boxing is, is a beautiful illustration because in boxing, you climb in the ring, 
And neither you got it, or you're going to get knocked out. See, what you got to understand, you get power with the devil. So you, when you face the devil, you should never lose. Amen. When Jesus, when Jesus, the, there was a funeral, and the, the little dead boy, the death didn't jump in Jesus. Life got into the little dead boy. Amen. When Jesus came along, there was a fever in the, in the, in the Peter's mother-in-law. Fever didn't jump in Jesus and make him sick. The fever left the person. When the woman with the spirit of infirmity, infirmity didn't jump in Jesus. He got the infirmity out of the woman in Luke chapter 13. So see, there's a, you and I, uh, we, what we can't do is talk about heaven again when we don't have it. You, one day we'll have to climb in the ring in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, Jesus faced the devil in the wilderness. He drove the devil out of his life. Okay, so that, that's what you, you have to understand. There are going to come a time that, there's going to be a Stephen anointing that you're going to tell truth to someone, and it's not going to go over real well. Okay, when when you are Stephen, they're, they're going to they're going to stone Stephen. Okay, now if you're gonna if you're gonna cry out against Herod's sin, you got to be willing to lose your head like John the Baptist. That's what dead phony religion exists. There's no cost. We call it no cost religion. Okay, a Christless, bloodless religion. Okay, so but but real Christianity is extremely costly. The anointing is very costly, okay? The heavenly anointing is very costly. Okay, so I'm not going to, uh, I just want to, I can't get too bogged down here because we're going somewhere. So basically, Stephen brings this message. He tells them and, and said they, they gnashed upon him. Uh, they became upset. They, became, they, they uh, stoned him to death. Now, chapter 8, verse 1. And we'll bounce off of this a little bit. Just be patient with me because I want the Spirit of God wants to take us somewhere today. In Acts chapter 8, verse 1, now Stephen, they just stoned Stephen, and standing there, Saul was consenting. So now, God, this is the guy that God's going to make into Paul the Apostle. Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time, there was a great persecution. The word great, that means a strong, a big, a large, exceedingly high persecution against the church that, that was at Jerusalem. And what we need to understand in church history Persecution doesn't weaken the church and strengthen the church. And their problems has a way of separating the sheep from the goats. Now, there was a great, uh, so Saul is there. He watches Stephen get stoned to death, and he saw him. Uh, Stephen saw Jesus uh, standing at the right hand of the Father, and Stephen praying, holding out this sin against him. That, that made an impression upon Saul. Now, remember, Saul's killing Christians and putting Christians in prison. Now, we have to, uh, to understand in context, what's really happening here was that when you go all the way, the, the disciples that followed Jesus for three years, uh, day and night traveled with him, went everywhere with him. Uh, but when it came to the Garden of Gethsemane, they fled. Because they were when it came to the death of self, they fled. It was fine when everybody getting free food and everybody getting healed. And everybody getting, there was large crowds, there were multitudes. But when it came to the Garden of Gethsemane, crowds went down. Okay, so when they all fled, they said the Bible said they all forsook him. And so they went. So then uh, Jesus goes to the cross and then comes back. So Jesus then in Luke 24, he appears to them, and he said, Tarry until you are due with power. So they have the faith and the climb into the upper chamber. They tear in the upper chamber until there's an outpouring of the Spirit. Acts chapter 2, there's an outpouring, and there's this momentum. Now there's a breakthrough. Okay, there's a breakthrough. Now, what we're picking, we're picking this up in the 7th chapter, and from chapter 8 on here, you're going to see now, Satan then tries to stop the momentum. And what you and I got to be able to see, that if you get a touch from God, you get a strong salvation experience, you get a baptism of the Holy Spirit, a baptism of fire, you get a strong prophecy, God speaks to you in vision, you get a breakthrough, you get a real momentum, something happened to ignite you, something really come to spark you, and get, get you out of the boat, really walking upon the water, something will happen, you have to understand, Satan then will try to stop you, when I was a dead, phony church person, the devil left me alone because he had me. But when I got saved and baptized the Holy Spirit, then all kind of things started happening against me. That's kind of what we're going to be talking about. But I need to I need to share something with you, okay? Now, now remember, so that you understand the Acts chapter 2, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So when you get a strong touch, or your family gets a strong touch, or this church gets its strong touch, the Spirit of God really begins to activate, the Spirit of God really begins to move, the devil, because someone comes to the altar and prays a sinner prayer, the devil does say, well, I'll give up on him. 
uh, I, I've lost control of it. The warfare intens- intensifies, goes after them more, okay? So now, there's this has happened, there's a momentum, and then Acts chapter 3, that's when the, the lame man was healed, so there was a healing, so 3, 4, and 5, uh, there's a warfare about, and everything comes against that healing, that supernatural healing, uh, can God heal, and so there's all this warfare between the religious system of their day, and real, and, and, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now there's a great persecution against the church. The word persecution means to pursue with hostile intent. Now you need to understand that if you really get saved and you really intend to go on with God, the devil will use people and will pursue you with hostile intent. And the goal is to try to hurt you and wound you, devastate you. The devil wants to stop your forward progression. The devil doesn't care if we come to church as long as we're dead, phony, a hypocrite, living in lie, living in defeat, sick, bound, angry, mean, selfish, proud, and feeling the, you know, a whole bunch more. The devil doesn't care if we come to church. I th- in fact, I think he prefers when we're not right with God for us to come to church to make a fool. Okay, so there's a great persecution against the church that was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad. And now remember, remember that very strongly, okay? They were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Uh, now, let, let me put this in here, okay, now. Because uh, remember, remember, I was, uh, in fact, I'm going to turn to that, Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 3, and remember, we talked about the persecution of Stephen, and they killed Stephen. And the different things. In Revelation chapter 3, we were talking. Now, well, well, let me back up. Yeah, first of all, uh, the, the church at Sardis was was very. Ne- there was a lot of. That's basically talking about. Uh, there was a lot of bad things happening. Let me just put it that way. Just dry. It, it was really dead. Then what happens is. Uh, that's. Well, there was like. The, he talked to the Catholic Church and then he talked to the Reformation. And he said to the Reformation Church that you have a reputation that you're alive, but I said that you're dead. So there was the Catholic Church, which means continual sacrifice. And so there was consequences coming against that. And then the Reformation came. If you don't understand why the Reformation uh, didn't have the, why Jesus said you have a reputation that you're alive, but I said that you're dead. Because they kept, they believed in a lot of the things that were wrong that, uh, baptism by babies that you could baptize a baby and that's what got them saved not not being born again and they came in they came into agreement uh, the church of the reformation period came in agreement with politics and with government and there was mixture between the church and government and so they didn't want to offend the churchmen so basically the church then was in bed with the government and martin luther made many uh, associations and agreement with with politics and with government during that time. That's why Jesus said the things that he did. Okay, now I said that to say this because this I'm trying to get this in here because this is important where we're going that you'd understand this. So the Catholic Church was was one church, and then the Reformation Church. And and remember, Jesus said, "You have a reputation that you're alive, but I say that you're dead, and repent or else." Okay, then what happens after that is the Church of Philadelphia that we see in verse seven. Now. What that uh, that's that basically is a period like the early nineteen hundreds. Uh, here's some of the things that happened. And let me just say verse uh, seven to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Right, these things saith he that is holy, that is true, that has the key of David, that will open it, that no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man open. I know your works. I've set before. I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. Okay, now let me explain that to you because if if we understand this, and I, I know that. I shared this before, but there's some people here that weren't here whenever I shared that. Okay, here's here's what Jesus is saying now. There was the Catholic Church, and then there was the Reformation Church, and now there's the next period. Now, remember, the seven churches speaks of seven stages or seven periods, and also speaks of like seven different types of pictures of church at different stages of the growth, and they're in different relationships. Some are not right with God, some are partially right with God, some are not right at all. Okay, so then when he comes right here and he says, I'm going to open up a door that no man could close. So the the Catholic Church w- w- received a lot of consequences. Then the Reformation Church had taken what I call a step in the right direction, but didn't go near far enough and was rebuked of the Lord. Now what happens after that, the Church of Philadelphia comes, and then there's revival. Now what this is, and I've got this upon the board right up here, okay, in the prayer that, in the prayer that they made, they begin to get re- revived. Now, during this time period, 
And I, I want you to, if we could, if we could see what happened then, and then look at the time period of right now. Okay, your life, your family, the church, the kingdom of God. If we could, if we could compare that, if God did, if God did something then, can God do something now? Okay, so they begin to pray. Now, when they begin to pray, they begin, they started. Okay, so they went in the prayer and they started getting revived. Now, being revived on fire for God, now they have a heart for the lost. Now they begin to weep. What did, what did Nero tell us? She began to weep over those in prison. See, if you want to see some people get, can, can I just talk? Can we talk? You want to see some people in America get mad, let their favorite ball team lose a game. Uh, um, somebody get mad. You talk about man, they'll get real mad. A soul will die, go to hell, they're not troubled. Come on, say to God. That's just the truth. And, and, and I want you to understand, I was raised on the ball field. Uh, I, I like sports. But uh, planet Earth is in trouble for a reason. Now, let me get it. Okay, so they begin to pray. They begin to get revived. Okay, so what happens is they begin to get a heart for souls. See, be careful spending time with the real Jesus. You begin to think like he thinks. You begin to feel what he feels. Okay, so then they begin to evangelize and they begin to go in the mission. Now, that's where my message is going today. It's just I got I to gotta take this back door approach to get. What I want you to understand during this time in the Philadelphia church, this is when the John and Charles Wesley, the, the Methodist movement, they were, at that time the most on fire church or movement was John and Charles Wesley. The fire of God was burning within them. Tremendous song. Then William Booth came in, the founder of the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army would would get a, a permit, even even here in Kansas City, they would get a permit uh, for a parade. And they would get their band together. The Salvation uh, Army band would march down Main Street, come to the main intersection of Kansas City, kneel down while they were fasting, had this parade, and claim the city for God, and then begin going door to door and hold all kinds of meetings to get people saved. See, because they had prayed, and when they prayed, they found God, they start becoming alive to God, they begin to think like, they begin to act like Jesus. Not a dead, phony church person, but they begin to act like Jesus. They begin to feel what he feels. They begin to behave like he behaved. They begin to speak like he spoke. They begin to heal the sick. They begin to deliver the captive. They begin to cast out the... They weren't ashamed of raising the dead. It was in the Bible they did it. They let the chips fall where they made. Okay, now what happens is there's the Great Wales Revival begins and that spreads all over the world, followed by the Azusa Street Revival. Now let me, let me come back so that you understand what I'm saying here. Jesus said right there in Revelation 3, I'm going to open up a door no man can shut. Now how are you going to stop all the people got saved? Now, now listen, Charles and John Wesley, uh, William Booth, uh, Jonathan Edwards, Charles Finney, George Whitfield, Charles Spurgeon, Dwight Moody, these men shook Europe, shook England, and shook America for God. Come on, they shook America. Now, what happened when then, see, now, they began, they sought God, they found it, they prayed, and they, they sought God, they went to the upper chamber, what did they do? They, they're fasting and praying, they're seeking God, they found it, they begin, what happened? God poured out His Spirit, and so Acts chapter 2, a revival begins. Now, we're going to look at, now, when they begin to come down from the upper chamber and apply what they got up there, in their life, and everybody they came in contact with, they were not spiritually, politically correct. They were not ashamed of truth. Truth was truth, and they didn't water it down. Don't, uh, don't take me to a restaurant that when you get a glass of tea, you could read a newspaper through it, because I, uh, I don't want wimp sissy tea. I want some big boy tea that's got some up in it. Come on. Don't give me sissy tea. <laughs> I want something that's got some power in it. Okay, so when <laughs> I love your coffee. <laughs> Big boys. Uh, all right. Okay, so now watch it. They come down from the upper chamber. Watch, now you're going to see evangelism today. And then you're going to see the birthing of world missions. Now that's going to be our message today. My message, my title today is Connecting Fasting and Prayer with Soul Winning. Connecting Fasting and Prayer with Soul Winning. Okay, now here's what we're not going to do in this fast that we start tomorrow. We're not going. We're not going on a diet. <laughs> we're not. We're not dieting. <laughs> we're not going to just for twenty-one days see how much weight we can lose. But no, the time and energy that we would spend preparing food and you know all the all that, we're going to spend that time reading our Bible, praying, seeking God. We're going to be a chain. We're going to come out of this thing chain. Okay. 
So we got to be able, if we could connect the dots, okay, be careful seeking the real Jesus because you find him. But he'll deal with your stuff. Now you know, he's still dealing with my stuff. And he might be dealing with one or two of yours. Okay. Now, let me just say this, then we can, we can move on. So there was prayer, they begin to get revived, they begin to evangelize, and they begin, then the, they're going to see the birthing of world mission. Okay, so then what happened? John G. Lake shook Africa. Then there, there was a William Carey and David Livingston uh, stone that, that these were tr- a, a famous, tremendous missionary that shook nation and shook continents for God. Come on, somebody give God a praise. Say, uh, these, these men and women of God that sold out their God were shaking nations, shaking cities, and shaking continents for God. And if I'm still dealing with the re- electronic devices, something's wrong with me. Come on, say, dumb God, I'm compromising somewhere. <laughs> All right, now, now we're going to we'll go, back, go back there to uh, Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. The great persecution against the church. Now, don't be surprised. Don't, don't, see, uh, uh, let me put it this way. Can, can God trust me with trouble? Or if a demon the size of a net comes against me, will I become a serial killer and blame God? See, we got to be, (laughs) we got to be strong, okay? Okay, there's, there was great persecution to get the church that was at Jerusalem. Now, what, what you and I, we got to be able to connect to God, the dots. When you, if you're dead, bored, frustrated, unfulfilled, dissatisfied, church member, the devil will leave you alone because he's in control. But if you get, you start coming alive, if your light bulb begins to light up, if you start becoming a light in the dark world, something going to come to try to put out your light. You've got to connect those dots and understand. There are things right here that's happening to people, not because you've done something wrong, because you have done something right. We're going to preach that today, okay? That's what you've got to understand. If you don't have these, these churches that are preaching, there's no devil, there's no hell, are lying to people. Okay, so if it's, here's, here's what we do. If it's in the Bible, we believe it. We, we get our doctrine from the Bible. Don't come to me and say, well, this denomination, this church, that, that organization, teaches that. No, I want to know what the Bible says. I can show you everything we do in the Bible, okay? That's what I tell people. If, if we're doing something not in the Bible, then we'll, we'll change, we'll confess, and we'll repent. Okay, now, there was great persecution. Why? Because somebody, somebody who had failed, somebody who had walked away from Jesus, somebody who had denied him in Gethsemane, fled from him, Jesus said, boys, you're going to need something else. So you need to tarry and tell. And they worked through the condemnation, the shame, the disgrace of fleeing from him, from denying We've all denied him. Come on, say that. We've all denied him one way or one time or another. We've denied him. But they worked through the condemnation. You know what Jesus said, Terry, until you were due with power, they had to work through. The devil talked to them. What do you, who do you think you are climbing that upper chamber? And reminding, trying to remind them, try to remind them of things that they had said or done before, but the truth is that God doesn't even remember what we did before. It's under the blood. That's the power of the blood. Come on, give God a praise right there. Okay, so there was great persecution. So don't be surprised when, when Jesus said, know this, if they hated me, they'll hate you. <laughs> Come on, saints. Okay, so why are we surprised? It, it, you know, don't become a mass murderer because someone rolls their eyes at you. You're not ready yet. Say, Come on, you got to work through this. Okay, so there was great persecution against the church that was in Jerusalem. Now watch what happens. See, and this is very important what God's trying to do, in my opinion. Okay, so they're quite, my God, my God they, they're, in, they're in revival. So we're going to, we're going to open to the church. We're going to have revival every night. But see, persecution comes, and they couldn't get their club together, and they were scattered. Because God wanted the, did not want the gospel to be one place. He didn't want people to have to come to one place. He wanted this to go all around the world to every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. Sometimes something to happen looks bad, but it's really good. Sometimes it's disguised. God, see, God, God sometimes will make our nest uncomfortable to get us where God wants it to really be. Come on, say them, God. Now, so they're scattered. See, um, 
Uh, and let, let me let me define what that means. This, here's what that word scatter means in the Greek. It means to sow throughout. It means to distribute in four lands. Isn't that, that powerful? <laughs> okay, so and now, now let me tell you what I'm, I'm going to tell you. One of the things, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. When I was praying, I said, God, how did, how did planet Earth get in this mess? And how did the church get to this so much impotency, so many problems, so many things? Like, uh, don't try to pretend there's no problems in the soul culture. There's a lot of problems. How do you know? I got problems. One or two of you got problems. Other people got problems. There's problems. Things are done wrong. These people that are, that are you know, uh, robbing America through television, Christian television, getting all this money from people, it's an abomination. Come on, somebody needs to preach on it. We need to call sin, sin. Do you realize our sister Nuru got thrown out of some large, some prosperity churches by what she preached this morning? Come on, saints of God. That's right. Now, here's what I'm saying. Let me, let me explain this, and then we can move on. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I was genuine. I'm trying. I'm trying to see God. I want answers. I don't want to just sling mud at the problem. I don't want to just curse the darkness. I want to bring in the light. I want answers to people's problems. So I, I, when I was praying, how did we get in this man? And what I felt like the Spirit of God showed me, and I'm, what I'm telling you, this is my opinion. So you don't have to believe. You got to. You believe like you want to believe. Okay. This is what I feel that God showed me, is that we begin to hoard people. We thought bigger was better, and instead of sending out evangelists and missionaries, we begin to build bigger buildings. Yeah. And then the budget went up. Now we're trying to gather more people, and now we're gathering, we're gathering, we're bringing to us rather than sending out, and that's how the whole world. So then Muslims are evangelizing, Islam is evangelizing, and we're trying to big. We're trying to build bigger barns. We're trying to build organizations, denominations, and movement to stroke our ego. And if you call sin, sin with someone, they say, oh, you're just jealous. No, no, because my, my, we're, not, we're not about people. We're not about fancy bills. We're not about big budget. We're about the power and the presence of God. There's a place of holiness that you don't bow to bail. Bigger is not necessarily better. Okay? okay, I believe that the church got away, the, away from evangelism, got away from uh, missions, and I believe that God wants us to bring us back here. That's, the, that's one of the goals of my message here today. And so, let me just say this while I'm here, because I'm believing, we are believing that the nucleus of the church is really believing for a breakthrough, and we're believing that God's going to enable us to start a free Bible college, we're not talking about anything like ORU. We're talking about 20, 30, 40 um, uh, students. And uh, the guy in Topeka, uh, Parham, he had, when he's a famous minister, and he had a, and uh, that was before the Zusa Street Revival, and he's the one that mentored uh, William Seymour, who God used to start uh, the revival uh, in uh, in the Zusa Street. And, and he had a free Bible college in Topeka and had 40 students. And so he had 40 students and shook, the, shook America, shook the whole world. Because what happened in the Zuda Street, what happened in the Zuda Street was the birthing of about 16 denominations. Come on, that's where the same as you have came out of there. The Four Square Church came out of there. So there's tremendous movement that came out of there. Now, see, you don't, you don't, we don't have to, Think something big. We just we just want to walk in what God wants us to be. Okay, so we're believing. We don't need to. We don't need to grow that much that much more numerically to be able to do some of the things that God wants us to do. But I just want to plant the seed within you. They, see, there are reasons why we're fasting and praying. We're not trying to lose weight. That that may be a second. Reason. That's fine. I uh, I could drop a few. <laughs> it won't it won't make me mad. <laughs> it won't it won't make me mad. But we're, we're trying to contend, okay? We're going to wrestle with God. Now, we're going to see, we're going to see connecting. If we can connect the dots, fasting and prayer will, will, will lead to soul winning, and that will be through a whole lot of different ways. Now, that's basically the introduction, and, and I'll start preaching uh, the basic message from here on out. Now, in chapter 9, this is where, this is where Saul is, is persecuting the church, and Jesus appears to him. And knocks him to the ground, and he, and he's uh, verse nine. 
I'm, I'm not going to uh, preach about it because for the sake of time here, but verse 9, and Saul was three days without sight, neither did he eat or drink. So Saul is now fasting, and there rose a certain disciple. Uh, well, hold on, I need, I need to back up. Verse 6, it's, uh, Jesus appears to Saul, and Saul trembling in the stone, and said, Lord, what would thy have me do? And the Lord said to him, now Jesus appears to him. Now, this goes back to my Friday night message. Remember, I told you my Friday night message, I'm going to spurn a whole bunch of messages off of that. This is just going to fit in there. This is going to be part two of what I preached Friday night. I, I think that will be this coming Friday night. But this this is basically going to say the same thing that I, that I, I said Friday night in a totally different way. So this will fit in. Remember I said, God will give you word. And in the word that God gives you, there will be an assignment. And then God stands back and watch who will come into alignment with the assignment. Okay, so if when we feel comfortable coming to church for years or decades and hearing words with an assignment, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and we don't seek, pray without ceasing, a little or no prayer life, uh, abide in my word, and, and, uh, and we don't even bother to read the Bible. See, what we're doing, we, we don't want to become comfortable. Well, let me put it this way. Remnant people will hear... That's why he said, in the seventh church, it said, let him that has an ear, let him hear. Because, see, if you're remnant people and you're going somewhere, if you know where you are, remember, God will come to your present. He will invade your present to give you future. If you're still chained to your past, you won't go anywhere. Because if you, you, the devil will remind you something that something that happened and keep you bitter, keep you angry. Someone did this to me. Someone hurt me. Someone wounded me. See, so one of these decades, we've got to get up from there and break all the chain. We've got to let it go. Stop talking about Jesus doesn't even remember. And come on, say to God, we're going to get healed. We're going to get delivered. And when we get when we get up from there, we're going to walk in a new anointing, go to another place. Amen. Okay, so it's important that, that we put this part in here, that, that Jesus then appears to Saul. Now remember, something happened in the upper chamber. And there was an outpouring, right? So there's a great move of God. So then the, Stephen now has the courage and the anointing to preach, knowing it could cost him his life. And they kill him, and so uh, he's, uh, he's martyred, and there's Saul standing there, consenting to Stephen being stoned to death. He saw Stephen die. Now, he's one of the main persecutors. And what? how does God deal with his stuff? Jesus appears to him. So I don't care what you've said. I don't care what you've done. You haven't done as much as Saul. Come on, say to God. And if God showed him mercy, he can surely show you and I mercy. See, and you you have to be able to put this in there. The way up in the kingdom of God is down. He knocks this highly educated, wealthy, very influential man to the dust, down to the dirt. Amen. And Jesus says a word, and in the word there's an assignment. And the, the word is, arise and go to Damascus, and I'll tell you there, not here, I'll tell you there. What you shall do. What if he did not have faith in the word that Jesus just spoke to him? See what here as I'm trying not I'm trying not to be a hireling, I'm trying to be a shepherd. And see, if there's anything I can communicate to God's people, let him that has an ear, let him hear. We should not become comfortable hearing God speak and saying yes and not doing it. See, because I became shrewd enough to know not to say I wouldn't say no to God. I would say not now. So I learned how to manipulate, but it didn't fool God. Come on, say to God. You find it very hard to scheme upon God. So I will say that over and over again because uh, I want to be a real shepherd um, because what God doesn't want us to do is feel comfortable in disobedience. It It costs King Saul his kingdom, okay? The kingdom was rent from him because he rejected the word of the Lord. He still had his title, still had his position, but he did not have the favor of God, didn't have the anointing of God, did not have the protection of God. Okay, so the period of time goes by. Okay, now, the point I want to make right here is that God said, Rise and go to the city, and it shall be told you there what you must do. Now, what if he did not go there? 
What if you and I came to church and what if God told us to do something? Anybody beside me heard what to do? And I uh, will uh, uh, pray whether that's God or not. <laughs> we have religious ways. We have religious ways. <laughs> make it look, make it look spiritual, but in reality, see, rebellion can be sneaky. I, can, I, can, I still had the sneaky devil. I, can, <laughs> I was still kind of sneaky. Okay, now, now, now watch it. Now, see what we're talking about when there's prayer. And fasting, it activates God. The Spirit of God starts moving. You start coming to alignment. You start coming into agreement. You start coming alive. Now you're starting to care about others more than yourself. And evangelism. And so when someone kicks the bucket down, you, you don't look at them coldly and say, Well, if I'd have just had faith. If I'd have had the love to tell them and warn them. See, when we weep over them. More than judge them. Amen. It's a whole lot easier to throw a stone than it is to pray someone else through. Before I can pray someone else through, sometimes i got to learn how to pray myself through. Amen. Okay. Now, watch the activity. Okay, now. All this happened in the first nine, first nine verses of chapter 9. Then verse 10, there was a certain disciple of Damascus. Be careful when Jesus used a certain man, a certain woman. <laughs> certain man was that certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Uh, and to him the Lord said in the vision, Ananias, yes, I'm here. Oh, what are we going to do, God? I want you to go to the street called Straight and inquire to the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus because he's, what's he doing? He's praying. he's praying. Now remember, it already said he's not eating. Okay, so he's praying, and he has seen in the vision the man called Ananias coming to put his, formerly nicotine stained hands upon him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias said, Yes, God, I'll go right away, right now. <laughs> he said, oh, 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 I, Are you kidding me, God? This can't be going to bind you, Satan. This man, this man killing Christian. I know that's the devil trying to trick me. And I know how much evil he's done to, to the saints around Jerusalem. And he has authority from the priest to bind all that call upon your name. But God said to Ananias, Go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel unto me uh, to bear my name before the Gentiles of the non-covenant people to the kings of the children of Israel. I'll show him what great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, he, I said that to say this. Now, God gave Saul a word, knocked him to the ground to put him in a teachable position. Been there wow. several times. When things are, when, when the drug dealer when the drug dealer really got it cooking, I mean, they got a lot, a lot of drugs, a lot of women, a lot of money, a lot of cars, a lot of people hanging. Let them get arrested, get busted, then lose everything. Crowd gone. <laughs> it's hard to reach the drug dealer when everything's going well. Well, let them get busted and lose everything. Yeah. What'd you say, preacher? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, saying. God said to Saul, arise and go to Damascus. And when you get there, I'll tell you there what you must do. Uh, see, hell doesn't care if you hear God's voice as long as you don't go. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Come on, say of God. Long as you don't leave the ground that you're familiar with, he's familiar with killing Christians. My God, my God. So he has to humble him to put him in the hand of someone else to lead him around by the hand. And then God says to Ananias, uh, here's what I want you to do. And God gives Ananias a word, and in the word there's an assignment. What's the assignment? <laughs> I want you to go minister, lay your formerly nicotine stained hand upon Saul and set him free. He's our, I gave him a vision of a man by the name of Ananias coming to him and praying for him. Look how God connected the dots. What if he would not have went? What if Saul wouldn't have went there? What if Ananias wouldn't have went there? There's people that need you. Yeah. Come on, say, tell God. Amen. There's people that need you. The question is not has God been speaking to us. The question is are we willing to obey Amen. what God has already been saying to us? My God, my God. Okay, now. All right. Uh, let me see where I... 
Amen. Okay, so uh, a whole lot happens here. Okay, uh, we're going to skip down to, uh, so there were, he argues, and then I, verse 17, uh, he entered to that, put his hands upon him, brother saw the Lord, even Jesus that appeared upon you, the way to come, that uh, the mind, receive your sight, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes that had been scaled, and he received sight forthwith, and the rose that was baptized. There's people who can't see waiting on you Amen. and me. Come on, saints of God. And when he received meat, he never, he never ate until he got healed. My God, look at that. See, he's fasting. What's he do? He's fasting. He's praying. What are we going to do for 21 days? We're going to fast. We're going to pray. And we're going to believe now. See, he, he was fasting. He was praying. God gave him a vision. He has a vision of someone. God going to send someone to him and lay hands upon him and heal him. Come on, say to God, you're the person. We are the person that God wants to speak to and send it to people. We got to get in position. My God, my God. The person that God sends you and I to may not be spiritually, politically correct. Saul was killing people. There are going to be some people you, God going to send you and I to. You've got to have faith. <laughs> You've got to have faith. All right, now. All right, now. So then, he, uh, verse 19, now now he's willed the munch of crunch. He's going to chow down. So he eats, and he was strengthened. And then we'll solve certain days with the disciples that were in Damascus. And straightway, Saul, being made into Paul, preached Christ in the synagogues. What's he doing now? He's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in the synagogue. He's, he's now preaching the person he was formerly ministering against. Don't tell me God can't change people. See, this is in there. It's a demonstrate God trying to get our faith back. We got to stop here, come into the church, hearing what we ought to do and not doing it. We need an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. We need to come alive in God. Let the Spirit of God speak. Let God move. There's some souls out there, saints of God. God going to, you're going to hear God's voice. God's going to put someone upon your heart, and God's going to send you to different people. Okay, now, so he's preaching now, and he's, oh, they were all made. Say, it's not, it's not it, this one that was killing people in the name of Jesus, and he brought them bound to the chief priest. Verse 22. So they begin to speak against Saul. Verse 22. But Saul increased the more in strength. That word, word increased me. He was became empowered. He was made strong. He was enabled. So he was increased to more in strength. Confounded the Jews that dwelt at Damascus, proving this was the very uh, that this was the very Christ. Now, uh, and it goes on to say, and they all live happily ever after. And Saul never had another problem. The very next verse says, and and verse twenty three. Now, how long has Saul been saved? Not very long, right? Okay, not very long. Now, what? Now, verse 23, And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel. Uh, are they invited? Oh, we want to pay your way to Bible school, Saul. We want, uh, we want you to be our pastor. Would you, would you come and we, we want you to mentor us. We want you to start a Bible college for us. We want you to be our pastor. We want, we want you to minister to us. What they, what, why did they come? <laughs> so why are we surprised when you start coming alive that death starts coming against you when you come alive the opposite of death and the devil trying to kill what God is in birth within you come on saints of God see he says I said before you death and life truth life that you are deceived may live and may multiply the same spirit my God get ready the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall dwell on you and quicken make alive your mortimer come on give God some praise Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. So you got to understand, when you can connect the dots, you pray, you start coming alive, you start evangelizing, you start reaching out, and, and what happened? The devil comes. He's not saved very long, and they come to kill him. Come on, saints of God. The thief comes but to steal, to kill, to destroy. So why are we surprised? Oh, they can't come and kill you in the natural, in the society we live in. So they try to kill your reputation. Come on. They'll go on Facebook. They'll go on all these electronic devices. They'll 
They won't, they won't witness to a sober man. They'll call people. They'll text people. They'll email people. They'll knock on doors. They'll tell everybody bad things about you. They'll try to kill your reputation and your calling and your joy. You're not giving the devil your joy. Come on, get up. Get up on there. In the name of, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's to be a holy awakening. That's to be an awakening. Come on, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. So Saul's increasing, and the Jews took counsel to kill him. Now, we have to understand now. The Jews represented, now remember now, they're the people, the Hebrew children, have had a covenant with God. Okay, so now, just as Nero taught us, they had retreated to a form of God, a form of God and had denied the power thereof. Okay, so they had a form, they had retreated to a meaningless, dry, boring ritual. Okay? Laws, legalism, duty, and, and none of them are alive. And when, when Jesus comes upon the scene, and, and the, the same, and he begins to save people, and the government, they begin to persecute, because they begin to try to put this out before uh, they lose control of the people. Okay, now, so the Jews come, they took counsel to kill him. Remember now, the, uh, the, the Romans hated the Jews, the Jews hated the Romans, and they all hated the Christians. And united against them, okay? Okay, so now, verse 24, they're lying in wait. That's the tactic of Satan. They're lying in wait. You know, they're like a, they're lurking in the shadows, waiting for an opportunity to jump on. And they uh, they watched the, the gates day and night to kill Saul. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down in a wall in a basket. Your way of escape sometime from the devil's tactic may be odd. They had to let, put him in a basket and let him down, let him down the wall. And that was a way of escape. Now, different things happened here, and I, I want to move on. Verse 31. Then had the churches rest throughout all of Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and they were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord, and the comfort of the Lord of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Okay, uh, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to, to review just one thing with it. Turn to uh, Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, so that you understand the scriptural basis of what a lot of what I'm trying to say today. If you understand this right here, Acts 1.8, But you shall receive power if the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses. And the word witness there, you mean shall be a, mean a, what, a martyr. It means one who bears witness by his death. Okay, so you can, there's a death to self. And there's the death of the natural. There's a death to self. Okay, so you shall be witnesses. How many want to be a witness? Okay, unto me, both in Jerusalem, that's, that's our home city, and in Judea, that's home missions. Samaria, that's missions, and then to the uttermost parts of the of the earth, that's foreign missions, okay? So that's basically what you see up here, okay? So you, you for your family, for your church, your, your local church, your city, your nation, uh, and foreign nations, okay? That's the scriptural basis, what I want to show you, basically, where we're going here today. Now, turn to Acts chapter 13. Okay, this is, this is where it really began to make sense to me. In Acts chapter 13, and then we're going to get down to some nitty-gritty here. In Acts chapter 13, now there were at the church that was at Antioch. Well, uh, let, me, let me shoot. Uh, I, mean, I, I skipped something. Uh, chapter 11. Go to Acts 11. Uh, almost boo-booed. Okay. Acts chapter 11. Now remember back there in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, it said, and Saul was there consenting, and there was a great persecution rose up against the church, and then they were, and then they were scattered. Okay, so their comfort zone was upset, uh, and so they, they began to scatter because they couldn't all gather one place. So now everywhere they go in every direction, they begin to tell everybody, everywhere that they go, about Jesus, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the devil thought he was winning, but in reality he was losing. So God allowed something to happen to get them scattered, to get them from not just all being all big at one place at one time, so they begin to get scattered, okay? So they're going everywhere. Now everywhere that they're going, now they're so alive to God, they're not trying to be spiritually, politically correct. They have this great sense of urgency that time is short. 
See, the sleepier, the worldly, the, the more worldly we become, then the more seduced we become, and the less urgency that we feel. And we, and we, 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 uh, we say the truth is, we say, well, I'm going to love them. In the truth is, we're compromising. And there's a place that sometimes you get to bring some strong truth. There's a, there's a time to be quiet. There's a time to confront and be loud and everywhere in between. And wisdom is knowing the difference. Now, in, in Acts chapter 11, important to remember Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Great persecution, and they were scattered, okay? Now, in Acts chapter 11, verse 19. Now, they that were scattered abroad. Where were they scattered? Abroad. Abroad. Okay, that word, that word there, uh, they, that means to sow throughout, and means to distribute. Them that were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen wow. traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. What are they doing? What are they doing? What's it say? Preaching. Preaching the word to none but the Jews only. So they're, remember now you're going to see that, that scripture. I came to the Jews first. Okay, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Okay. Okay, so the preaching, uh, the preaching the Lord Jesus and verse 21. And the hand of God was upon them. And a great number believed. A great number believed and turned it to the Lord. Now, here's the point we need to make, okay? The persecution didn't stop them. The devil tried to put their fire out. The devil tried to hurt them, tried to wound them, provoke them, agitate them. The devil tried to make them feel upset and angry at God. Things ought to work out better for me. So they see problems many times. Because if our heart's not right, a problem happens, and people go flesh out, go drink, drug, fornicate, lie, cheat, steal, and then blame God. God, if you, you should have protected me, because if you had protected me, I wouldn't be out here sinning. Yeah. No, that we weren't ready yet. Amen. There was still something within our heart. Okay, so the persecution here that came against it, the way God described, a great persecution came against it, and you find them with a great anointing, even though they went from point A to point B, they have a great anointing, and many people get getting saved, because they did not use the scattering, moving from where they were comfortable to another place, to, as they used to go into sin. Come on, say to God. So the devil may do something to hurt you, to wound you, provoke you, agitate you, but see, when it comes down to this, that you will not forsake God for anything or anyone when that's settled within you, that you'd rather have the presence of God than anything or anyone, any amount of money. Okay, now, when, when they were scattered, okay, now, verse 22. Very important. We're going to say something here now. Then, t then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church that was at Jerusalem. And the church at Jerusalem... I love these words. They sent forth. They sent forth Barnabas. Now let me just inject this before I forget, because I what I believe, and I believe that's something that's God doing, and I believe the nucleus of the church has really been allowed God to cleanse and purge and sanctify, refine, wash and prepare. I believe that the Spirit of God has been doing a work. I believe gently, peacefully, without. Without effort of the flesh, God is bringing us into a holiness anointing. It's almost like you could see, it's like the golden sunshine in the morning and in the evening. It's almost like you could see the glory of God in the atmosphere. You could just feel God. God is so, you can feel his presence. He's just so alive. He's just so powerful. The, we call it the manifest presence of God. The glory cloud of God is spoken and formed. And God out of the cloud, God's speaking. And the, in his presence, is fullness of joy. And you won't leave that presence for anything or anyone. Okay, now, I said that to say this. I forgot why I was saying that. <laughs> Pressure got to me. <laughs> I believe with all my heart God wants to do something. And I believe that we're going to be, this church is going to be allowed of God to send out evangel and one or more evangelists and one or more missionaries. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. I believe it. See, I believe with all my heart that God wants to do something. And I believe that God is speaking. God spoke to Saul, rise and go to... And he's been speaking to people here. And everybody, he's been saying different things to different people because we're all at different stages. Amen. 
Okay. Semhar Angel. Now don't throw maters at me because I'm going to use a word here, but not in the way the world uses it, okay? Because the Spirit of God said something to me during Sunday school. And I looked at you, and it's like it, it, it was really like really strange, and it was like something like furry. And I go, "What is that?" And the Spirit of God began to speak to me. Now, don't throw tomatoes. I'm going to use a word. I, I'm going to use. I'm. I'm going to tell you ahead of time. So you don't throw tomatoes. I'm going to use the word chick, but I don't want you to think of a female, young female. I want you to think of a baby chicken. And the word of the Lord cometh to you this day. That thou, as a little baby chick, as a mother hen would have her little baby chicks, and everywhere the mama hen goes, the little chicks follow. And thou as a little chick, a little tender, vulnerable, sensitive as a baby chick would depend upon the mama hen say the Lord thou has come to me as a little baby chick would trust in mama hen and thou has followed me with all of your heart soul strength and mind and even as a young child say the Lord even as a young child would cling to a teddy bear when it's lonely, it makes it feel secure. Thou has clung to thy God, saith the Lord thy God. Thou has clung to thy God. And yea, saith the Lord, as time goes by, chicks grow up. And time will go by, saith the Lord, and thou will never forget the wonderful experiences that you had being born again, being as a young chick, and as a young believer. Thou will never forget the joy, the wonderful experiences that thou hast had with thy God. But the chick will grow up, and one day the chick will become a hen. And then I, the Lord thy God, will give you little baby chicks New converts will be gathered around you because I am giving you as a mother in Israel heart, saith the Lord thy God. I am giving you my heart. I'm giving you my heart for my little ones, saith the Lord thy God. My God, somebody give God a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Is there a further word? Only prophecy, only, no counsel, no prayer. Is there a further word for this? Only this angel right here. Only this angel. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's go back in here. Okay. All right, we're, we're in the world. Okay. Uh, all right, here we are. Verse 22 in chapter 11. Tidings of this saying came to the ears of the church that was Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as any of them. Now let me say this, okay? In 1994, when God poured out his spirit in Toronto, revival began to go all over, uh, broke out of, at Pensacola. There were revival hot spots all over the world, all over the world. You, you, could, you could go to Toronto and there'd be 120 people from Japan. It, it's just, it was just amazing what God did. And we were going around, and we were just everybody's just going, all the walls of separation were torn down. Everybody's going everywhere. Whoever had the meeting that night, we just went there. And two different, two places I remember. One, per, one place said, come catch the fire. Take it back to your nation. Take it back to your city. Take it back to your church. Take it back to your family and spread the fire. Come catch it and spread it. 
And then the church was saying, leave your church and come to us. Which, which one still going and which one fizzled? See? When the church begins to hoard, when you see this right here, the anointing that began to send Barnabas out. Now watch this, okay? That he should go as far as Antioch. Who, when he came, he had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exhorted them with purpose of heart that they would cleave unto the Lord, for he, Ananias, was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and with faith, and much people was added to the Lord. Then, now watch, because this is going to connect, okay? We're going somewhere with that. Remember that. They sent forth Barnabas. And now, verse 25, Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Saul. Send the point A, and then he goes to point B. For when he found him, he brought him an Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year that they assembled their, themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians, first of all, at Antioch. And in those days, prophets, prophets, remember the office of a prophet, uh, and, and I need to say this because I felt like the Holy Spirit said this to me when New was preaching. You had to, to, to discern and recognize and acknowledge the office of a prophet. Her calling is that of a prophetess. Okay, so here's what prophets see. If you don't understand this about prophets, first of all, uh, many places a, a prophet could preach a weak revival and maybe no one would even know that a prophet had been there. Yeah. Prophets are different. We have to learn how to recognize a prophet. Yeah. So what, here's what prophets see. Prophets see, here's where you are. You have this tremendous, tremendous, tremendous potential but you've got A, B, C, D, and if you don't deal with A, B, C, D, you'll never get to where they'll fulfill the potential. Yeah. But the problem is the person that they're ministering to is blind to A, B, C, D. Yeah. Because pride is very blinding. Yeah. So prophets are called seers yeah. because yeah. they see what other people don't see. Amen. So when a prophet speaks, they say, we got problems. Yeah. Here's the problem. And a lot of people, they don't want to acknowledge that there is a problem. So they don't change. They don't grow. They come in with ABCD and they leave with ABCD and they think they're winning. But in reality, they're, and a prophet spoke. And they thought, you know, that's negative. Tell me something positive. I don't, that's negative. No, that's what's hindering you. Your hatred, your rebellion, your unteachable spirit, your pride and selfishness and anger, that's keeping you from entering into what God. You can claim it all you want, but until you deal with your stuff, you're not getting where God's bringing you. There's potential, and you're wasting your potential. Now, that's what I'm, now you say, uh, uh, Prophet, you need more love. No, it takes more love to confront people with stuff that they can't see. I'm preaching now. Uh, that's just extra, okay? Okay. Now, so then, okay, so there's prophets there. And certain, and certain days, the prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch. And they're set up with them called Agabus and, and signified by the Spirit to be a great dearth or great famine throughout all the world that came to pass in the days of Caesar. And then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief, send relief, send relief to who? Send relief to the brethren. Said relief to the brethren that dwelt in Judea. Now, follow this, okay? Connect the dots. Which also, when they did, they sent it to the elders by the hands of. Remember, they sent forth Barnabas unto the harvest field, and he looks up. He's trying. To, he tries to find Saul, and he finds Saul, and now they begin to team up. And they're, be, they're beginning to use of God. Okay, now let's go to chapter 13. Remember that. Chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were at the church in Antioch certain prophets. Uh, you need to understand there are apostles and prophets today. There are apostles and prophets today. You have to understand m most of the church today tells you there's no such thing as an apostle or a prophet today. They say... They, they say, 
God doesn't. They say that there's evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but there's no apostles and prophets. But they forgot to tell God because He's still calling and raising up prophets. There's still prophets prophesying. Now you have to understand a prophet. Uh, a prophet is not someone who says, "Thus said the Lord, prophesied." You can prophesy and not be a prophet. Okay, this, but it's different when a when a prophet prophesies. It's different than when the gift of prophecy. There's a depth. There's a power. When a prophet preaches, the paint curls. When something happens in the spirit realm. Okay, let me get into chapter 13. Now, the word of the church that was in the annex, certain prophets and teachers, such as Barnabas, Simeon, that was called Niger, uh, Serene, whoever, whoever, uh, brought up by here, the tech reference. <laughs> it's my way of acting like. I act like I know what I'm doing. Okay. Now, what starts tomorrow? Okay. And what did Saul do? Okay. And he and he saw the vision. He's fasting and praying. He saw the vision. A man called in and I was coming, laying his hands upon him, praying for him. And he received his sight. He got his breakthrough. Okay, now, I want you to stop because basically a lot of this message today is about pastoring the church where we are. Just acknowledging here, here's where we are. Okay, and what does, what, what does God want to say? What does God want to do? Now remember, fasting is not a diet. We're not just going to wait 21 days. We're going to, any time that we would spend eating or, or cooking or cleaning up afterward, we're trying to spend more, make us more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to the Word of God, to get more revelation. Okay, so you spend that time seeking God, you're going after God. Be careful going after God because you'll find Him. And when you find Him, you walk away from the bush that's burning, chains. Okay? Now, verse 2. Now, I want you to stop and think about us starting tomorrow. As they minister to the Lord. Now, how, how can you minister to the Lord? Prayer. You can pray. Well, did we do that today? Pre-service prayer? And, you know, we're praying, we're worshiping, we're, what, what do we do? We come and we transition from the flesh to the spirit. You may be tired, you may be uh, uh, oppressed when you come, but you learn that a transition is not how you come in. Because you could come in tired, you could come in oppression, but you learn how to transition, you reach out, you touch him, you focus, you shut out other voices, you, you, uh, negative thoughts, unbelief, all critical things against other people, you shut it off, and you get here. So you, as they minister to the Lord, as they begin to think upon him, they begin to talk to him, they begin, they begin to get vertical, they begin to sing, they begin to pray, they begin to worship, they begin to pray, they begin to open up their heart, their spirit, man, unto God, they're ministering unto God. They're not coming to a church building and enduring a church service, they're come to meet with God. They've been brought to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. And God honors that. Okay, as they do, you have to understand, you can minister to God. He loves God. Worship. Now, now, now me, I'll give you the scripture so you don't throw tomatoes at me. John four twenty three. God is seeking them. Got a lot of money because He needs their money. <laughs> who's, who's He seeking? Let's put it this way: He's seeking lovers. He's seeking people that will love Him. That want to spend time with Him. When you fall in love with someone, you want to spend time with him. That's why we want to be in church. We love God. And we're not ashamed of loving God. Come on, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready say to God. My God, my God, my God. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody love God, not ashamed of it. Praise him. As they ministered until the Lord and, what's that next word? As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, okay? So they ministered to the Lord and they fasted. So they were fasting. Uh, okay, so the, what they're doing then, here's what they're doing. And, and uh, I, I love I love uh, Kenneth Hagin Sr.'s definition of fasting. Someone asked him, well, do you fast 24 
hour fast, a three day fast, a seven day fast, a 14 day fast, a 21 day fast, or do you fast a 40 day fast? And his answer was, I fast the world. I fast all the time, so I fast anything or anyone that will strip me of the life of God, the anointing of God. Anybody that got that leech anointing to suck the life out of me, to suck the blood out of me, I don't have time for people that have no intention upon going anywhere. Okay, so as they ministered to the Lord, they fasted. Now, when when Saul, in Acts chapter 9, when he, when he fasted, what did God do? He gave him a word. Someone was going to come. And going to lay their hands upon you. He can't see. He's knocked down to the dirt. He can't see. When you first get saved, it's a whole new world you can't see in the spirit realm. It's just, it's like, uh, this is a totally different realm. We we're used to the flesh of the worldly realm, and then you get into another realm, and you don't, you don't, I didn't know what's going on. Oh, this man, this is different, this is weird. What do you, why do you people always talk about blood? I go to the church and they talk about the blood. I think, man, these are strange people talking about the blood. Why do they talk about blood? Now, now I know I talk about the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood, okay? But you had to understand that, <laughs> praise him. Okay, you had to understand things happen. It activates God when you fast the natural. It plugs you into the supernatural. So you disconnect here and you plug in here. You disconnect from the natural and you plug in to the supernatural. You disconnect from the flesh and you connect with the spirit realm. You disconnect from the world and you connect with the kingdom of God. You disconnect from death and you plug in the life and your life will change, okay? Now, okay, so they fasted uh, to the Lord. I'm sorry, they ministered to the Lord and they fasted. Now, when they fasted and they sought God, and you know, they're praying. Now, if those of you that come early, that we consecrate every church service. Consecrate ourselves. We consecrate everything that's said and done. We consecrate this church service to Jesus. And we plead, God, help me. Help us to get out of your way. Let the kingdom of God come in here. Okay, so they ministered to, to the Lord and they fasted. And the Holy Ghost said, because they're fasting, they're praying, they're seeking, and they're ministering to God. So they're talking to God and someone talks back to them. Who is it? It's God himself. So the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost said, separate, separate unto me, who, who? Don't we, remember, we, and the church sent forth Barnabas, and Barnabas looked up Saul, and then they sent relief by the hands of Saul and Barnabas. You see, God began to form a team here together. God began to do something. See, because somebody... Somebody prayed in the upper chamber. It was an outpouring. And then opposition. I, uh, here's what uh, in the, the three book, the uh, trilogy, the final quest, the call, and the torture of the sword. Here, uh, when Rick Jordan was having these prophetic visitations. And Rick Jordan's going, oh, oh, my God, there's a whole bunch more of them than there is of us. Where are we, where are we going to get the people to come against them? And God said, uh, you're going to change them from being on the wrong side to the right side. The wicked are going to become righteous. One time we were the wicked, and someone prayed us through. We were once wicked, and now... <laughs> Come on, Saint of God. Where are we going to get people from from the other side? Our enemy is going to get saved. Be careful. If there's a soul in your life, God just may save him. Come on, my God, my God. Come on, God. We give God some praise. We praise you, Jesus. The people have been brought to the foot of the mountain. Come be with you, God. Let the kingdom of God come in here. Let the wind of God blow in here. Point your spirit upon the God. Let there be a holy awakening, God. Quicken us, God. Swing up a well. Oh, Oh, Okay, here we go. Okay, as they, verse 8, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost. See, be careful. The devil doesn't want you to sing. The devil doesn't want you to pray. The devil doesn't want you to pray. The devil doesn't want you to worship. Because the devil knows if you start singing, someone will show up. Come on, saints of God. Surely, after all these years, we can add one plus one, 
and come over to. If I see him, God will show up. He will have it. I praise him. Come on, we're going to give the devil a black eye. Come on, praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody shout in the dub of the voice of time. Praise him, praise him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My God, my God, my God. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work for the work that I have called them. Wow. Now, this is so important, say to God. Here's what I believe. I believe that the power of God wants to be so strong in here. In every church that let God be God, let his enemy be scattered. That God wants to be able to call people and send them out. we got to stop trying to gather. We need to sow some seeds out there. We got to stop. We got to stop trying to build bigger barns. Come on, saints of God. We got to. We got to get on fire for God and begin witnessing every. We need the spirit of evangelism. We need to be so alive in God. If we get the spirit of evangelism, we get a heart for world mission. I'm going to believe that God's going to allow us to send out people, send out missionaries, support the mission, pray for the missionary. How many will believe with me? How many will believe with me? Come on, saints of God. The devil didn't want you to pray. The devil didn't want you to minister to the Lord. Things will begin to happen. The devil will lose control of you. Come on, saints of God. Somebody praise him. Okay, uh, again, verse 2. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to get past this. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I've called him. Now, here's what, here's what we got done. Now, now they said the Holy Ghost said. How do you think the Holy Ghost said that? Prophets. See, that, that's why Satan has attacked the supernatural to get the supernatural out of the church so it would be so dead, so dry, so boring that people can't wait to get out. A ball game should not be more exciting than a Pentecostal church services. I'm not against the ball game. I'm not against the ball game. <laughs> Don't throw tomatoes at me, okay? <laughs> I'm saying that being raised from the dead is better than throwing a football. That's what I'm saying. Okay, now. Okay, you have to understand, the Holy Ghost is still speaking. So when the Bible talks about the Bible, okay, not me, the Bible said there's doctrines of demons, doctrines of men, traditions of men, that make null and void the Word of God. This is an hour that you're living in. God chose you and I to be on earth at this time, and you and I got to know God for ourselves. We got to get our doctrine from the Bible, not from men. Because there are people telling you that God has lost his power, and if anybody speaks of the church, that's the devil and not God. And I call it the faith in the devil denomination, because they believe God, the devil can speak supernatural, but not God. It's a lie from hell. If the Bible says earnestly desire to prophesy, we're going to prophesy in here. We're going to let, let the chips fall where they may. You can do more with a dozen people prophesying than 10,000 people that won't prophesy. Come on, saints of God. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody give God some praise. You always see the tip of it. You always see the tip of it. You always see the testimony. You always see the testimony. Thank you, Lord.
For thou, holy woman of God, dressed in white, robes of righteousness, fine white linen, saith the Lord, thou dost love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, soul, strength, and mind, saith the Lord thy God. And I, the Lord thy God, would have thee know that I am so well pleased with thee. I, the Lord thy God, am so well pleased with thee. And I, the Lord thy God, have seen, I have seen your childlike faith, saith the Lord thy God. And thou hast looked upon thy God as thy father. So I, the Lord thy God, will treat you as my child. The slightest, the tiniest of little needs that thou hast, thou can bring to thy daddy. And I, the Lord thy God, shall hear thy prayer. And I, the Lord thy God, shall answer. For thy righteousness has got my attention. For I, the Lord thy God, would have thee know that I enjoy you. I enjoy you. Is there further word only for this angel? God to interrupt my message. <laughs> right in the middle of my message. All right, here we go. We got to get to a certain place. Let me go a little bit further. Okay. Um, you, you have to understand. See, think of this 21 day fast. We really see God. We do business. Here's here's my prayer for me. I got to wake up. Get me out of the spiritual sleepwalking, the spiritual slumber. I got to be awake. Awaken me, awaken me, so that you can awaken others through me. Okay, so when they, they fasted, they prayed. When they ministered to the God, God spoke. The Holy Ghost said. And he's, he's sending, he sends, he comes to the body, and he's begin to send people out, and you're going to see the birth of missions. Okay, now, so he says, and when they, verse, okay, Verse 2, they fasted and prayed. The Holy Ghost said, separate to me, burn up his soul for the work that I've called them to. Now we're going to look a little bit at the work God called them to, okay? So we'll just look at that. Verse 3, and when they had fasted and prayed, they were already fasting, they were already praying, and God spoke. So now before they send them out, what did they do? They're fasting more they're, and praying more, right? Okay, and when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands upon them and sent them away. That's how you know, see, when you got the real Jesus, because you become a giver and not a taker. Okay? Amen. Okay, so verse 4. Now watch what happens, okay? This is important because what we got to do, we got to bring this to where you and I are right now. To today's church, where we are, that we need to see, here we are getting ready to go this 21 day event. I'm not going to believe God. We're going to believe God. We're going to sow seed, okay? Verse 4. So they being sent for by the Holy Ghost, who Barnabas and Saul, they being sent for by the Holy Ghost, sent it uh, to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Now Cyprus there is the island home of Barnabas. Uh, the estate of Barnabas was sold. He sold his estate in Cyprus to support the ministry. And Some people don't know this. Pastor Jen and I sold our five-bedroom house to buy the church. We had, we had a, a, a ranch house, five-bedroom house, three bathrooms. And we sold the house to buy this church. So there's a selling out. There's a leaving all of that and coming in all this. So uh, Barnabas sold his estate to meet the needs of the saints of God in the Jerusalem church. Okay, now they're selling to Cyprus. And they, when they were at uh, Salinas, 
They preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John Mark as, as their minister. And when they'd gone through that, uh, okay, there was a false prophet there. And Paul rebukes him. And I, I don't have time to really go into that. But he rebukes him. And, and uh, what happens in verse 13. Now when Paul and his company loose from Papos, they came to Perga. The, uh, John departed from them, returned to Jerusalem. Okay, So John Mark departs them. That's an, a little story in itself that we don't have time here to go into. Verse 14. But when they departed from Perga, and they came to Antioch, uh, wherever, and they went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, they sat down. So they go to this place, and, and so they go to the synagogue, so they go in there, and they sit down. Now watch what happens, because this is going to happen to you, because you're going to go someplace, and you're going to sit down, and something's going to happen. I'm going to show you what's going to happen. I'm going to show you what God wants you and I to do. Okay, so he goes there, and, uh, and he, he goes to the synagogue, verse 14, on the Sabbath day, and he sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue, oh boy, did they ever make a mistake here. Because do re, you remember, remember those of you that were here, remember when I spoke on uh, Stephen's message, that uh, Stephen preached, and he preached that big boy message for two chapters, and uh, they, re, they said, you, you always resist the Holy Spirit, and he goes back all the way through their church history, show all the different prophets, uh, Moses, the different people, how they uh, forsook God and turned away, and, and sin and serve idols, okay? So uh, Stephen tells them all that. So what you're going to see right here is basically the same thing that's what Stephen did. Saul, now being Paul, is going to do the same thing. So he's going to preach this powerful message. So what happens is Paul goes in, he's sitting in the congregation. So the real little synagogue said, oh, what a mistake. Uh, anybody got anything to say? And there's Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in other words, now here's what I want you to understand. They, he, Paul, discerned this is an open door. You're going to be in someone's house, and someone going to, and God, you something. There's going to be an open door, and you're going to go through it. And in that house, or wherever you are, you're going to begin to speak in in the house, in in a neighbor's apartment, upon the job, at some place, some meet, some restaurant. Somebody's going to be there. They're going to need to hear what you got to say. And the door will open. Now watch what happens, okay? okay. So, so Paul went in and he sat down after reading the Proverbs. They said, if any, at the end of verse 15, if anyone have a word of exhortation for the people, say on. And Paul says, oh boy. <laughs> Paul said, verse 16, then Paul stood up. Remember, Stephen did the same thing, right? Yeah. Then Paul stood up and beckoned his hand, said. Now, let me just... Inject this in here. See, over and over again, when you when you put all this together and you connect the dots, all these people before were afraid and shy, but something happened in the upper chamber, and those that denied him at, at Gethsemane now were bold, and when they went to crucify some of them, they said, we're not worthy to be crucified. Crucify us upside down, because we we're not worthy to be crucified like our Savior. So I think tradition says Peter was, was crucified that way. I'm not for sure. I'm not... Uh, a real, real good on, on, on being history. But the point I want to make right here, something happened in that upper chamber, and there's a momentum. And what we really need to understand, that you get a touch, your family get a touch, this church get a touch, then hell's going to try to stop it. Yeah. And what I'm telling you, then we got to upgrade, and that's how you enter the double portion. Because you, 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 you're going to overcome whatever strategy the devil comes again. Now, understand... Very important that you understand that. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Though the enemy may operate through. How do you know that? Because he's operated through my flesh before. And I think one or two of yours. Okay? Now. (laughs) Okay. uh, Where am I? You're on 17. I think my page turned. 13, 16, and 17. Okay, yeah, Paul said, okay, there we are. Okay. Okay, men of Israel, you that, you that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people. He, basically, he goes on and preaches the history uh, of his people. Now, skip down to verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles, non covenant people, non covenant people, but besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. 
Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes or converts followed Paul and Barnabas. Who followed? Okay, remember the comrades. Remember the church originally sent out sent out Barnabas. Okay, sent followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue, continue in the grace of God. Yeah. Don't throw in the towel because when things get tough, when the when things get tough, the tough get going. Amen. We're going to go through this thing. We're going to stop running. We're going to stop throwing in the towel. We're going to get through this. That's one of the things about this fast. We're going to we're going to tear down some barriers and the spirit that's resisting. That's resisting the Holy Ghost. The Lord said God's going to destroy that thing. We're going through. Okay, so uh, the congregation, Paul and Barnabas, who was speaking to them, persuaded persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath day came almost the whole city to hear the word of God. Why did they come? The whole city the almost came to hear the word of God. But when the Jews... So now the city's coming, but the Jews are mad. The Jews saw the multitude; they were filled with envy and spoke against those things uh, spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Now, when dead churches, when dead churches see someone alive in God, and crowds leaving were the cemeteries for the resurrection centers, they're going to begin to persecute the resurrection centers. So they, because they're, they're, they're speaking against those things. One of, here's one of the greatest compliments. Here's one of the greatest compliments that can be given to me or the church. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you some stories. Brother. <laughs> See, you, you, what you got to understand is that uh, those things that, you're going to get so caught up at God. Uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, you're going to get so caught up with life, you don't have time for these people playing around with the bowls of death. You just, you just separate. You don't have time for it. I don't want to hear that junk. Don't tell me about that. Don't give me those emails. Don't send me those texts. Or just burn them up. You kidding me? I don't have time for that bunch of nonsense. Then Paul and Barnabas Wax Bowl said, this is important. It, Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God first have been spoken to you, seeing that you put it from you, you judge yourself. We don't. God didn't. You judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. There's people that will choose death over life. How, how unwise. How unwise. Choose death. Okay, so he tells them the truth, and I've got to move faster because I want to go one more play. Verse 48, when the, when the Gentiles, non-covenant people heard this, they were glad to glorify the word of the Lord. And as many, as many that were ordained to eternal life believed. Yeah. Now what's happening? Because Barnabas was sent out, and then he sought for Saul, and they came together, they began to work together as a team. And what's happening? The whole city come out. And the religious system hated them. And was talking about them. See, you and I don't have time to talk about them because we're talk, we're so busy talking to Jesus. We're so busy prophesying, talking in tongues, casting out devil. We're so busy preaching and teaching that we don't have time to talk to them about that nonsense. It says in the book of Psalms, God had delivered me out of the hands of the, those that want to strive and uh, cause all that junk. Don't have time to wallow in that stuff. I did that as a heathen. A bunch of nonsense, okay? <laughs> they glorified the word of the Lord many, and as many that were ordained to eternal, I believe, verse 49. And the word of God was published throughout the region. Yeah. What was they doing? They're taking the region. It's about territory. Yeah. Come on, say something. It's about territory. Yeah. Now, right. see, we got to add one plus one plus one to come up with three. That's why the prophet of God is telling us we got to deal with our stuff. Because if we can't control our mind, how are we going to take our city? Come on, saints of God. So we got to deal with our mind. We got to deal with the thoughts of our heart. We got to deal with our motives. We got to deal with our fear, our rejection. We got to, uh, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say another thing. We got to deal with our sense of worthlessness, our negative self image, 
our low self-esteem, but God doesn't call it that. God calls it unbelief. Those things will hinder our belief. They entered not in because of unbelief. We're not going to listen to that negative, blind, accusing voice anymore. We're going to feed ourselves the Word of God. Praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him for His Word. You're going to begin to believe what God says about you. Now hang on, because we're going somewhere. We're not, we're, we're not there. We're going. The air, I can see the airport, but it's quite a ways off yet. Because uh, we're, we're going somewhere. And if you're shouting this much now, just hang on. Okay, now. Okay, so the word of, the word was published throughout all the region. Now, here, here's how we can practice. Okay, so allow God to take over your mind, your will, your emotions, your heart, your sex life, your body. Your finances. See, don't be going around telling everybody how, how they ought to live for God. They don't even have faith to pay tithes. No. Come on, say to God. Would a man rob God? Yeah, so would a few women. <laughs> Come on, say to God. Don't even have faith to pay tithes. What to tell everybody else how to live for God. <laughs> that is real. Woo! Uh, uh, you know, in, in, in our either stand up, Pastor Brian. In, in, our, in, our, in our heathen days, see, you know, we, we, were, we would steal. You know, you'd be the, oh, I love you, by picking the, picking the, picking the, picking the, picking the, stealing from it. Oh, I love you. I love you, Brian. You just, oh, you're one of my best friends ever. And lifting. He walked, he walked out of the room, and his pile of cocaine was this big. When he came back, his pile was, yeah. oh, I guess the, oh, the dog must have came in here. No, we stole it from him. Come on, son, said God. <laughs> I, love, I love you, bro. Steal it from him. That's not love. Come on, we got to have faith. Come on, I'm telling you, the way up is down, and the way to get is to give. We don't even have, how are we going to shake a, a city? How are we going to shake a nation? We don't even have faith to pay tithes. Come on, saints of God. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Um, how many of you, let's just say, God gave you a breakthrough. God gave you a major breakthrough. And here you, you own a business. Now, you're going to hire a local thief to run the business? Would a man rob God? Remember now, I don't preach my notes. And the word of God was published throughout the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. Did, uh, did he tuck his tail go home? Take his toys and go home? Did he quit? Did he become a serial killer and blame God? He shook the dust off of his feet. Some, come on. The devil got to try to hook something on you. got to shake it off. Come on, shake it off of you. Get it off of you. The hurts and the wounds, people that haven't won God all these years, shake it off of you. Get the dust off of you. Get it out. Come out of there. Loosen it. Bro. Shake it off. Shake it off. Get your first love. Get your fire back. Get your vision back. Get your zeal back. Get your hunger back. Get excited for you. Shake it up. Shake it up. Come on, the devil trying to put something up. Shake it up. Get it off of you. Get it off of you. In the name of Jesus, get out. Get out of here. Look at you. Look at you. Having fun in church. My God, it's a resurrection center. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. All right, here we go. We got to. Here, here, basically, you just say, stirred up all the religious phonies, and they began to persecute Paul and Barnabas. They expelled them out of the coat, but they shook the dust up of their feet and came to Iconium. If they don't want, see, here's what I'm not going to do, and, and when, here's, here's what they're saying. You don't want it. I'm not spending the rest of my life here with people who don't want it. I'm going to go to someone who wants it. Come on, saints of God. 
You don't want it? That's on you. So he says, it was, it was neat that I come to you. You judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. So I'm going to go to someone else who wants to get saved. Come on, saints of God. I'm not going to plant, as a farmer, I'm not going to plant a crop in the middle of I-35. It's not going to grow. You don't want it? We'll take the seed and we'll plant it where to grow. Come on, saints of God. They shook the dust over their feet against them that came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, give me praise. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Chapter 14. Don't be entertained. And it came to pass. Don't receive it as entertainment. And it came to pass. Chapter 14. It came to pass at Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed. But... <laughs> the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Now, look, let, me, let me just say this. This is, what, this is something that you and I got to understand. One of, one of the devil's major tactics is consistency. The intensity... Uh, but you see, here's here's where we miss it. We'll go play a gym, and we'll go work out. People in America will go to a gym and pay to work out daily. Work out, working out, working out daily, and see, and then. A demon the size of a gnat coming against it. Oh, it's wearing me out. I don't want to it's wearing me out. It's coming against. How come God, you're allowing all this coming against me? This this demon the size of a gnat coming against me. You should protect me. Go to the gym every day, but not resist the devil every day. Amen. See, here's what it comes down to: is that you see the end when you see where God wants to take you. God will invade your present to give you a future. Yes, if you're still chained Lord. to your past, you don't go anywhere. Amen. Uh, somebody hurt me, a fly landing on my water bill. <laughs> we, somewhere along the line, we got it says, forgetting the past, reaching forth. Yeah. When you see that, come now, therefore, Moses, and I'll send you to Pharaoh, and you'll bring my people out to serve, serve God upon this mountain. When you see the mountain, and you serving God upon the mountain, you will leave familiar ground. Okay, yeah. i gotta, I got to get into that. Okay. okay, so then you had to understand the consistency of the warfare. Uh, Jackie, we understand that. How many is pretty familiar with sports? All right. Okay. What made me a better baseball pitcher was the batter trying to hit the ball out of the park. Right. What made me a better baseball hitter was the pitcher, the other pitcher trying to strike me out. Yeah. So, see, we will practice. We see that way, but when we come to spiritual things, the devil trying to be not weary of well doing, you shall. If, come on, you see what I'm saying? So see, how 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 long do I need to pray? How how much should I read my Bible? How often should I be at church? Enough that you win. As much as it, whatever it takes to overcome whatever trying to overcome you. Either, see, when you climb into boxing ring, either you're going to win or you're going to get knocked out. It's either you or them. And see, we got to be able to defeat what the devil brings against us. And the devil wants to wear you out. All right. All right. I got it. Okay. A uh, long time there, Lord. They spoke boldly in the Lord, which he gave testimony to the word of this grace that granted sight and wanted to be done by the hand. Uh, but the multitude of the city was divided. Uh, see, there's going to be division in your family. Yes. Not everybody in your family is going to be happy that you're alive in the spirit. Because you're convicting them of being dead. The multitude of the city was divided. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring sword. I came to bring division. See, that's the Bible. When you read the Bible, then you'll find out why he came. He came to bring division. 
if there's see there's there's a division because light and darkness can't dwell together. Death and life, you know, there's no fellowship. What fellowship does the devil have with, with Jesus? None. Okay. Um, okay. So you have to understand division comes with it with real Christianity. So the devil is behind the whole thought of dead phony religion. So that you're trying not to offend people. And in reality, that what we do, we end up offending God because we resist the Holy Spirit. We throw Him out of the church so we can please people who don't want God. That's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. God's raising up a remnant that want God. Yeah. Let the chips fall with the with religious phony. Yeah. And when there was a verse 5, when there was sought against the Gentiles and also the Jews and the rulers to use them to stifle them, they're going to stone them. And when they were, they. they they went to Lystra, the Derby, to the Laconia, and they and there they preached the gospel. So if it does work here, if it doesn't work at point A, they go to B. If it doesn't work at B, they go to C. And they get they don't want it to C, they go to D. They just keep on moving. They just keep on fishing. If there's no fish in this pond, I go to another pond. Very important what we're gonna say now. Verse eight. So now they get to the next place. Where they were before, they didn't want to hear what Paul had to say. They didn't want to hear. But there's a man, an impotent man. Verse 8, And there said a certain man at Lystra, an impotent man in his feet, a cripple from his mother, who had never walked. Now, I wonder if this man, is this man going to swell up get out of my face, Paul? See, sometimes our heads can get educated to the expense of our spirit. Right. And sometimes our need will push us in for a miracle. Here's a certain man at Lystra, impotent, that we means unable, he's weak in his feet, being a cripple, that means lame, halt, limping. You ever you ever desired to walk into the power of the spirit and it just seemed like you <laughs> walking with <laughs> walking with a little bit of a spiritual limp? Here this man, big and crippled from his mother, he had never walked. And the same person, this impotent man, heard Paul speak, and steadfastly beholding him, perceived, Paul perceived he had faith to be healed, and said with a loud voice, Stand upon your feet. And he leaped up and began to walk. Yeah. Now wait a minute, just came from place after place after place, and they ran him out of town. But the impotent man... Yeah. I'm saying there's a lot of lame people out there. There's a lot of impotent... Come on, take that God. Highly educated people, they don't want God. Find some impotent people and begin to pour it in the name of Jesus. Rise up. Get up from there. Get up. Get up from there. Get up from there. there. In the name. Get up from there. Don't be trying to split theological hairs with somebody. In the name. Get up from there. And the power of his voice. Power of his word. That's what we need. Come on, we don't need Hebrew. We don't need Greek and perfect grammar. We don't need all this theology stuff. We, in the name of, get up from there. Come on, we need to pour some blood. We need to speak. We need to speak to some dry bones. Get up, get, 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 get up from there. Okay, so. Stand upon your feet. And he leaped up and began walking. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up the voice. Now, this is the natural mind can't comprehend things of the spirit. To be carnal mind is death, but to be spiritual mind is, is life. Now, watch what happens. They lifted up their voice saying, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. So they think that Paul has done this by some, by some foreign god power. And there's going to be people... There's going to be some people that do not understand that the anointing of God is upon you. Because they've been taught there's no more signs, there's no more signs, wonders, miracles, healing, delivery, talking to the tongue. So, that, so that, that when you begin to operate in the supernatural, they will say this is the devil. Okay, This is some false god. Well, that's what they're going to say. In this hour that we're living in, you need to know God for yourself. You need to know the word of God. We are a church which says right up there in that lavender flower that we welcome to a revival of biblical Christianity. If it's in the Bible, we believe it, we do it. 
as, as, and we let the chips fall over the main. Okay, so uh, okay, so they that that's where the sin the begin to think. Well, this is this is some false god. He does this. And I turn to go to verse nineteen, and we're going to come in for landing. Okay, verse nineteen. And there came there certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposedly supposing he was dead. Now, remember now the persecution. The word persecute means to pursue with hostile intent. Okay? That's what you have to understand is that they will look you up. They'll text you. They'll call you. They'll make you. They'll knock on your door. They will come to you. They will pursue. They come to where Paul is. Okay? They come there. Why? Because the supernatural is operating. You need to understand when you come alive, when you start affecting the spirit realm, the devil is very aware of what's happening in the spirit realm. So they come... Uh, to build Paul a church building, say we want you to be a pastor. Oh, no. uh, we we want to we, we want to provide food for you. No. Why did they come there? Stoning. The stoning. Yeah. Now, stoning. now, you have to understand the lies and the accusations. Well, let me just say this: Come in for landing here. There are people right here today. It's. Let me get, let me say this whole thing before you. It's not what the devil says about you. It's what, see, the devil's trying to get you to say about you what the devil's saying about you. And it's really, it's not even what God's saying about you until you believe what God's saying about you. What is the internal voice inside of you saying to you? Right, right. Amen. That's right. See, when you, when you understand, so when the inner man comes into alignment with God and that is converted, the mind is converted, the heart is converted, and any filthy, any lying, any accusing, any unbelieving, any condemning thoughts, we can break through deliverance, renewal of the mind, those things are going to be broken, and you're, that internal void, the lies of the devil is no longer going to affect you, see, and those days that could stone you, and today they say lies, accusation, the devil bombards our mind, the devil is, is trying to stop you He's trying, remember, go all the way back to Acts chapter 2. What happened in the upper chamber and this move of God. Okay, Satan is still, still trying to stop the supernatural. Yeah. Dead, boring church services, drive, people can't wait to get out. There's no need, the devil didn't have to fight that. There's no life, there's no anointing. People's lives are not being changed. They can't wait to get out of there. But when you start coming alive, when you when you understand that you just watch like Wednesday's Friday Saturday Church Day warfare against you will be higher and stronger on Church Day. Then also Saturday, be careful. The later starts getting Saturday afternoon. Be careful of the text. Be careful of any email, any phone call you get because the devil trying to get access to you. Mean mouth you. Someone hurt you, wound you, provoke you, agitate you, tell a lie about you. It's because the devil's trying to steal Sunday morning. So in today's society, they can't go around and stone people. So the, the devil's operating in the spirit realm. This was to the place. Now, let me. Um, this is to the place that they're stoning people. And imagine being Paul the Apostle. All that he had been through. And they stone him to the place that the people stoning him thought he was dead left him laying there and they walked away thinking supposing he was dead some of you got saved you got baptized in the Holy Ghost some of you got called 
Some of you were prophesied to. Some of you had Bernie Bush experiences. You came alive with God. You got up from where you were. You began to answer the call of God. You began to walk this journey. You started the run, and the devil came against you to hurt you, to wound you, provoke you, to agitate you, to get you full of hate and unforgiveness and bitterness and wrath and anger. The devil hit you uh, so hard. Maybe we, maybe we fell down, and the devil thought, oh, he's dead now. Supposing you're dead, there'll never be any use to God now. I've hurt him so bad, I've wounded them, I caused this to happen, I caused that to happen. There's been death, there's been divorce, there's been famine, all kinds of things have happened. They're dead now, there's no hope for them, and the devil just leaves them supposing they're dead. But, but, but God, come on, supposing they were, but, but, I can come on. The disciples gathered around him. Come on, but but the disciples, you are the people. We're gonna gather around people that's been hurt, they've been wounded, because we know what it's like to be hurt, to be wounded, to be lighter, to be rejected. We know what it's like. We've been hurt. We've been come on, we may have found it. We're not knocked down, but not knocked out. Come on, take the God. Get up on there. In the get, 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 get up on there. In the, in the name of it. Get up on there. Rise up and walk. They thought you were dead. They thought, oh, I got, I knocked him out. He'll never climb back into the ring again. But, but the disciples, supposing the devil left you, left you alone, thought, oh, he'll never rise up. I heard him. He'll play the role of the victim for the rest of his life. He'll hate God. He'll hate the church. He'll hate Christians. He'll hate pastors. He'll hate, he'll be full of bitterness and, and hatred and rage and anger. He'll never be any good again. Supposing that he was dead. But, but God, but God. See, you got to see. You got to see the power of resurrection. Come on, say God. The power. The same spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall dwell in you and quicken and make alive. Your mark. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, say. And he said right there, he said, through much tribulation. Too much tribulation. Shall you enter in to the kingdom of God? Get ready. We're going to fight some tribulation. We're going to be willing to tribulate. Come on. Get ready. 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 Come on, saints of God. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Come on. Praise Him. Somebody praise Him. Somebody praise Him. The same Spirit. The same Spirit. Come on. Supposing He was dead. I can see. What is raging at my feet, I can feel The spirit surrounding me, I can hear The sound of nations rising up